Sarkar, you may begin. Namaste, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll start with a brief prayer, which you may have heard before from uh, other presenters. Sahan Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahanu Hanaktu Sahaviyang Karvavahe Tejasvi Navadi Tamastu Vidvishavahe Om Shanti 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 May God protect us, may God nourish us, may God enlighten us, and may we use that enlightenment for betterment of the world, peace to all. Um, in apologies in advance, uh, this is the first time talking, so please bear with me. So the first question is, what does your religious scripture say about the appearance of a new era? In our um, Sanatan Dharma, the texts and the scriptures refer to the eras as yugas, Y-U-G-A. Hindus believe that the process of creation moves in cycles and that each cycle has four great yugas or epochs of time. And because the process of creation is cyclical and never ending, it begins to end and ends to begin. There are four yugas that have been mentioned in our scriptures the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, the Dwarpa Yuga, and the Kali Yuga. The Yugas are not equal in duration and also are not adequately defined by the unidirectional flow of sequential events that are signified by measurable, quantifiable improvements or increments. Each yuga is said to span thousands and thousands of years. Additionally, the concept of the limitless dimension of time describes an eon or a kalpa, which is a culmination of a thousand cycles of four yugas, each of a different quality. By one estimate in our scriptures, a yuga cycle is said to be 4.32 million years, and a kalpa is said to consist of 4.32 billion years, which should give us an appreciation of how vast the dimension of time stretches. <clears throat> and yuga comprises of events, evolutions, and transformations a balance of decadence and an ultimate reclamation of purity and truth. Each yuga can see one or more manifestation of the Supreme Being in physical form to establish balance in the universe. Per the most accepted school of thought, these epochs of time represent the degree of loss of righteousness as the world progresses. The theory suggests that during the Satya Yuga, the first Yuga, only truth prevailed. During the Trita Yuga, the universe lost one fourth of the truth. During the Dwarpa Yuga, we lost half. And now the current era, the Kali Yuga, we are left with only one fourth of all that is true and pure. Evil and dishonesty are gradually increasing and replacing truth in the subsequent eras. <clears throat> we are currently in the Kali Yuga, therefore characterized by much corruption in the world. The manifestation of the Supreme Being who we believe will return to establish dharma or righteousness and purity and truth again is named as the Kalki Avatar. Second question is, what does your religious scripture say about why a new era is needed? As I mentioned before, 
the cyclical pattern of the yugas represent a continual creation, sustenance, destruction, and recreation of the universe. In the Bhagavad Gita, verses 7 and 8 of chapter 4, Bhagavan Sri Krishna promises us, Yada yada hi dharmasya, glane bhavati bharata, apyuptanam madharmasya, tadatmanam srijanyam, paritranaya sadhunam, vinashaya cha dushvitam, dharma sangsthapanaya arthe, sambhavami yuge yuge, meaning, I am coming, I am coming. When there is a loss of dharma, righteousness, piousness, truth, then I am coming. When the iniquity increases, then I'm coming. I am coming to destroy the wicked and to protect the nobleman. And in each yuga, I will come again and again. Thus the end of a yuga will come when the Supreme Lord must manifest himself or herself to defeat adharma or rampant corruption. The third question is, who are those who are able to live in this new era? Per our, my understanding of our scriptures, there are no prerequisites or predetermined qualities or attributes that confer any sort of eligibility on any being to exist in a particular era. Based on the accumulation of one's karma or actions in previous births, one may or may not be born in a particular yuga. Every soul who is residing in any yuga has unique duties and responsibility that need to be executed or fulfilled to complete their journey in the material plane and attain their oneness with the Supreme Being. Namaste. Thank you so much, Ms. Paramita Sarkar for that wonderful sharing from the Hindu faith. Let's give her again a round of applause. Thank you.